Righto, so now we're going to get to something a little bit more interesting, and it's basic looping. So this is one of those things that uh, you'll immediately want to do straight away. It's, you want to operate across a whole bunch of nodes. So let's set something up. <clears throat> Can I have a grade, a merge, a blur, and a roto? Uh, there's no actual special nature of these things. I just happen to do all the hotkeys for these, and you know they're just there, and they're very easy to recognize. So. Let's start out with a description of what we want to do. So I'm going to write this out in full on English. For each node I have selected, actually I'm going to be more obvious. Turn the postage stamp on. Easy. I want to turn the postage stamp on and I want to disable it. Why you would do this, I don't know. Why I'm doing it is because it's a great demonstration, nice and obvious in screen. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna, is gonna translate this into uh, effect, effectively code. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna keep building this up. Now, it's written as one long line, which is a bit hard to understand. Because do I mean turn the postage stamp on all of them and then what does it mean in this case? So let's, let's make it a little bit more obvious. All right, so I'm gonna, Tab this across. Right, so this is a little bit clearer. For each node, I want to do two things to each node. So I'm going to repeat, repeat, repeat to the nodes. Now, if you remember from previous videos, or you just already know this stuff anyway, these last two things here are fairly straightforward. So let's pull up the grade. <clears throat> so on the grade node here, if we want to disable it, what we want to do is we want to tick this box, which is turn the value of the disable knob to be true, and the same thing with the postage stamp knob. So we'll write that out quickly. So turn the postage stamp on means, we'll just use the node as our placeholder. Right? So the node knob postage stamp set value to be true. All right, that's that's our machine-ish kind of Pythonic way of saying, or new KPI way of saying, turn the postage stamp on. We'll do the same for disable. The node knob disable set value true. Right. <clears throat> so that, that is very clear what we want to do. We want to say the node set value true. Uh, for each node I have selected, still in English. So let's uh, take this, let's build it up a bit more. For each node I have selected, we know that there is this call for this one. So what do I have selected is uh, nuke.selected node. No real points of guessing that there is a selected nodes. So if we were just to take this here and run it, let's put it here and run. Oops. Uh, I keep making this same typo, All right? I have one grade node selected, but you'll notice there is this little uh, notation at the front and back of the square brackets. That's not TCL. You do not need to run screaming for the hills. This is actually Python, uh, Python console. So the square brackets indicate this is a list. Right, so we'll select more of them. Notice also I've gone from top to bottom. Right. <clears throat> Blur, merge, grade, roto. So this is indicating that the roto is the last thing. Wait, why is the roto? Let me just try that again. Did I do that weirdly? Okay, I haven't rewound the video, but I must have selected the more weird pattern because you can actually see that I, I went from top to bottom deli very deliberately this time. And this ordering is the same. So the last thing I touched, the first thing I touched, so blur, roto merge grade i obviously so we'll look backwards i touch the grade the first which goes at the back then the merge is next roto and then blur if ordering is important or if you care about the order in which people select things so if, for example you're asking connect the connect a to b doesn't mean you want to connect b to a there might be a directionality so you actually have to get people to select things in a particular order anyone who's had to deal, deal with my or a bunch will will have probably yeah nightmares of that especially when grouping so let's uh let's fix that typo <clears throat> so that is selected nodes now 
we want to also further expand this one. I'm just going to put the word in here. Now, this is where we get into specifics of Python, where you need to know these magical keywords. The, see how they're highlighted in, in pink in the script editor? By the way, the Nuke script editor is surprisingly awesome. Uh, it's better than a text editor because it'll deal with highlighting. You can actually see all this stuff there, so it does make your life easier. But you can actually see this progression here. This is our natural language description of the problem. By simply putting it on to like a line break and then indenting it, it's starting to look very much like the Python. So we're gonna do one last thing. We've got this term here for each node. Now I'm just gonna be this. We could do this, right? Now this will actually work. For each node in nuke selected node, each node postage stamp set value true, each node disable set value true. That actually is totally fine. I would actually probably suggest doing this. All right. <clears throat> to me, that reads better in my head because, just to prove it, we'll run this and make it work. So I only, oh God, the 10 limit node. I'm just gonna pause this and I'll be back in a second after I've restarted Nuke. Right, I'm back. Let me just reset this guy. Do, do, do. Push your stamp. Don't you step on. All right, let's try that again. So I selected from top to bottom, grade mode, wrote a thingy around this guy. Magic. So it's done what we expected it to do. It's done uh, operation that's across all the nodes. All right. And that's roughly how you do multiple node kind of work. It is this standard pattern. We'll just dissect this a little. Right. -o. This is like take 13. It's really hard for me to explain how a for loop works, but I think I've got a solution. So this structure here, you can treat as a magic formula if you want, because it pretty much is. You use the keyword for, the keyword in, you put a word here, a variable name, which you want to use as a reference to all the objects inside this list, and you just do something to it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpack this and show you exactly in a long form what's happening. All right. So we're basically doing this. We start with nuke selected nodes. So nuke, oops, nuke selected nodes, the nodes, all right? So we'll do that selection again. So we have all the nodes. Then we start doing the for loop. So we say the node equals the first item in the list of nodes, right? So we'll actually look at this quickly. So the nodes is blur, roto, merge, grade, and then the node is blur, right? And then we're gonna do this. So I'll, I'll even copy paste to make it super obvious, okay? So we're saying the node do something. Then on the next loop, uh, so the next iteration, we do this. So the node is now this object. And we copy these lines. You can sort of see where this is going. Two. And three. Now, that's as many objects as we have. This structure here, this for loop will actually be able to go through. I'll do the first one, second one, third one, four, wait, fourth one, fifth. Okay, I've got enough. There's no more and it'll stop. So we happen to know there's only four items in there. So we stop after the fourth one. But that is essentially what a for loop is. It starts with a, starts with a list of things to run through. Uh, it start, you have a number of items you want to do to each, each thing you have selected in our case, or each thing, uh, however you get them, is your business. And it just unrolls this, does the first one. It's a short way of writing all that stuff, basically. So yeah, hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. Now, this is just about how to do something across a, a, a list of nodes. Now, I'll, I'll add one, I'll clear that up quickly. I'll add one more thing here and we'll break this deliberately. So I'm gonna put a dot in here at the very top, select everything again, and I'm just gonna change these to false. Actually, uh, 
we'll do that. Change it to false, change it to false. So grade dot merge roto blur. And it broke at some point. Notice it broke at the dot. And notice this kind of error here. Now, when you're iterating and you're working over a group of nodes, especially when you have dots in the selection, oops, dots in selection, you'll need to do error handling to a certain degree. The reason it errored here is dots, unlike every other type of node I have here, they don't have postage stamps. They also can't be disabled because, well, they're dots, like hit D all you like, it's not gonna do anything. Same occurs for no-ops. So bring up a no-op. No-op can't be disabled and can't have um, postage stamps. And also, good old friend, sticky note. Sticky notes also can't have postage stamps and they also can't be disabled. So if you have this kind of selection here, there are two ways you can solve this. The first way is to filter your selection, and the second way is to error handle during your loop. Now, since we're talking about loops, uh, in fact, probably this is, uh, I'll split this into another video actually about how to deal with filtering selections and error handling, because those are both interesting topics.